In this video, um, we're going to clean the aperture oil, a common problem for the 50mm uh, 1.4 AIS. Um, it's a really easy job and you don't need much tools or anything for this one. It's surprisingly easy, but it's such a well-built lens, it's super solid, so um, I'll show you how to tear into this thing. Um, it's a lot easier than expected. A lot of people will try and take this ring off. It's glued on to the optic um, assembly, so don't try and uh, remove that. I'll show you. It's actually it's not common for a Nikon lens to do it this way, and especially this is the AIS, the later one. But there's a screw right here. All you do is you undo that screw. I leave it in still, um, just about there. You put it in the touch. And then this just simply unscrews. Um. <clears throat> then you just leave that, you take your spanner, you'll see your notches right here. <clears throat> That's it. So now we're at the aperture, that easy. Let's make sure this is working. Good to go. <laughs> um, now um, you'll have these two screws. This is common. Um, you undo the screws. Don't peel that red glue off because we'll use that to align everything later. That's it. Now it should tap out. There it is. Um, I'll probably. Sometimes you'll have a little. It doesn't look like it. Sometimes you get oil around the outside. But I'll just swab the whole thing with the oil. Or with the. Um, uh, oh yeah, and so I'm using alcohol again. Uh, this is 70%. Um, so you got this little. Um, you got a little lever, okay, so you'll want to remember this. Um, you have a stem that comes through this uh, slot here and the, uh, um, the spring attaches to. So just take note of that. Um, it's the only long slot and so it will feed through there. Um, you just simply take the spring off. There it is all nice and oily. This one was actually still working but it was hanging up just a touch. It's starting to leak. And then when you're putting the aperture back together you're gonna want to remember the aperture blades point clockwise on this particular aperture. Um, I'll try and show you. I don't know if you can see that. So they're all pointing to the right uh, the blades, the points. So yeah, you just knock them out. And take a Q-tip, and we just um, just start kind of washing everything down. So, and then, so you're gonna, you know, I'll um, I'll do stuff like this, clean it all out here. Don't touch the element because then you'll have to clean it. And the blades, you just simply, you know, wipe them down and use the other end. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'll stop the video and I'll show you how to um, show you how to put it back together. So I went ahead and um, I cleaned all the aperture blades, the iris, and everything. Um, I use rubbing alcohol. It it's really uh, dries really uh, clean, no residue. Um, so I highly recommend it. Um, so we're going to throw the aperture back together and what you want to do is uh, you're going to run them all pointing uh, clockwise and we're going to stack them counterclockwise. So just start stacking them. Um, 
And I also I recommend that um, you know if you look for this lens on eBay or something, um, look for them oily. It's a really quick project. You can also look for uh, the 35 f2. Uh, it's a autofocus, so it's AFD, and they're uh, even the just regular AF, same deal. They they're really common to getting this problem, and they're really easy and quick to do. Um, this and the 80 and the 35. So look for those two lenses, and um, people dump them for cheap, eh? And pick them up pretty cheap, fix them up really quickly, and you got yourself a nice lens. So this is the last blade. What we do is we locate the first blade and you're going to want to um, just slide it down a little bit and then put your thumb over the uh, little brass uh, knuckle there and um, you're going to slip your blade under and it should lock in. Boom. And we're just going to close these up a little bit so they're all even. Open them, close them. And then you take your plate, and you're, this is the lever that holds the spring. You're going to feed it through that long slot we talked about earlier. And uh, so you can just drop it through there. and they should all snap in together there you go then open it wide open go over here take the spring we're going to throw the spring on just to create some tension put it back on and it should naturally close there it goes then um, I hold the aperture the whole iris like this and um, you're going to this, you're going to run this doweling through um, this is the aperture lever um, and you can see right through there there's a hole a really small hole so you're going to run you're gonna, we're going to watch this doweling come up through here um, so I'd open the aperture wide open the aperture ring, put it to 1.4 <clears throat> and then you can see the the slot that it goes into it'll run right through there And once it's in, we're going to close the aperture. And there we have it. So I'm going to put the rear cap back on. Now, like I said, um, don't peel that red um, glue off because this is going to help us line everything up. The um, where each of these, what I really should have done was set each one um, for each side um, separately, and I didn't do that. But it's still um, where the glue broke. Um, we'll just rotate the whole aperture until the screws go where the marks are from the old um, the old uh, glue, um, the residue that's still there. So that'll help us line up so we get a perfect exact um, location of where the, where the aperture sits. Because right now the whole aperture can, um, it can rotate. And these will stop it from rotating. Holy moly. 
Time for a new screwdriver. Jeez. This is my trusty screwdriver. I use it for everything. And it's just worn right out. There's not much of a tip left. I magnetize my... You take a magnet, bang magnet, and just go whack, whack, whack on the tip of your, like on the end of your screwdriver and it'll actually jump the magnetism onto your screwdriver and then you can magnetize things so that, uh, you know, it, my screws just stay on, you know. Oh, that won't work, but <laughs> you know what I mean. So now that this is, um, so there, I don't tighten those screws yet, okay? Um, now you can see I can rotate this, right? So we're gonna go until it butts up to the old glue. It just goes whack, it just butts right up. And holding it, now we just tighten these screws and it should, everything will just be tickety-boo. Give it a good tightening. Not too tight, actually. Don't do it too tight. Some of you will strip it, you don't want that. So now I just flick it a few times, get some dust moving in there. Don't spit. Used your high-end uh, canned air. I got a whole stomach full of canned air. Awesome possum. And because I didn't touch it, um, I don't have to clean it, the element. I'll just run quickly, run my finger through. Just in case. And you just simply bring the focus up. Drop this back on. You're gonna wanna rotate uh, counterclockwise until you feel it go click, and then you know you're in. Throw that together. Grab your spanner. Give it a good little oomph. Chuck your ring back on. Wrong way. <laughs> Again. There. Go until it's nice and tight. Find your screw. You guys can see how quick this project is. It is so quick. And um, you can find lots of dirty lenses out there. Even just uh, a lot of times, well you just saw how I did this, a lot of times you'll get, um, this is a fairly new lens, but you can get fungus in here too. So basically same thing, usually the usually fungus is only located most of the time in between the aperture. So all you would have to do is take off this ring, pull the whole element assembly out and clean that element that we just you know from this whole thing and then open your aperture you don't have to disassemble the aperture and you can clean the other element and sometimes that's enough just to clean the uh, um, the fungus out of the lens so that is even quicker of a project Holy! tell you what so there you go hope this helps you guys all right talk to you